The artwork for the game is excellent. It reminds me of Diablo. This whole game reminds me of playing Diablo as for going throughout the different maps and they just they change and the demons change as to how you have to fight them, how strong they get, and how they give you better equipment and you can equip yourself and In ancient times, the demon lord Malgazar owned and controlled the world and ruled with his demonic minions over the lands until heroes arose from the ashes and came and went into the demon lord's lair and defeated him or her. And then they were able to create a monument to their victory and they called it Sanctum, the two to four player game by CGE. It takes about 60 minutes to 100 minutes to play and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Sanctum, you are going to be playing one of the legendary heroes from the foretold legend in which you're going to be moving from board to board, attempting to gather items and equipment, as well as utilize your stamina and magic to defeat foes of lessening to greater strength, as well as level up, gain new unique abilities, and equip how you would like based on what you choose to do. You'll have three different actions you can take on your turn, whether it be resting, moving on the board, and gathering demons to fight them, or you can go ahead and do something even more unique, which we'll talk about down below, and then after you get to a certain point in the game, you'll actually come and fight the demon lord Malgazar on your own and then of course with your opponents because they're working with you, but it's a game of fruition. The person who gathers the most points and survives the longest at the end is going to be the winner of the game. Let's take a look down below, I'll show you what the game looks like, a brief idea of how it plays, and then we'll come up and I'll tell you what I think about the game. Welcome to Sanctum by CGE and Philip Naduk. And as you can see, I've set it up for two players, but because the player boards are so large, I'm only going to be showing you one player board. But just imagine the other player board somewhere in this vicinity. You're going to set up the game based on the number of players, and it'll tell you which boards you will set up. This, In this case, for a two-player game, it's one and three. Go ahead and put these tokens out onto the player boards here, and then you're going to set them aside. You won't use them again. I'll explain that in a second. You get your stamina and your magic tokens, which you'll be utilizing, and these are extras that you'll be using for other things. You got some silver die, which you don't need to use just yet. And depending on the number of players, you'll also be taking these little things here and finding their location where they belong on the board and placing die on them, as well as other locations. There's going to be a unique achievement area where you're going to be basically placing these little guys on the board here. They're all randomized, and if there's any extras, put them back in the box. And then you're going to have your demons. You're going to have your rank 1 demons, your rank 2s and 3s, and it's based on that big skull in the top right-hand corner, as well as the number 1, 2, and 3. Shuffle them and organize them over here. And then they're going to have three stacks there. Your player board's pretty simple. You're going to start with two of these gold die here. You're going to have one gold die over on this little angel symbol. You're going to have one of these little, you know, these white gems will be placed here. You have your character that will start on your board. You're going to have your unique ability that you can use. And then you're going to have your stamina and your strength equal to the number of dots on here. Have your life set to 10 and then take your special ability cards. In this case, there's going to be six for each player as well as there's going to be these three little uh, square areas here which you're going to be placing down these gems. And the gems are based on the colors there. So two red will make two red. And then you can have two green and one white, and you'll place them just like this. These are what you're going to need to remove in order to gain the specific benefits provided on these cards here, which you're going to turn to abilities over here. Also, the main number of player, players in the game will determine whether or not you're going to start with stamina and or the mana pots here, which can give you these things back throughout the game. There are some extra scary bad guy cards, which you won't need, as well as some of the extra scary bad guy abilities, which you also won't need. And then you're going to have these guys here where you'll shuffle and deal them out. And depending on what you get, you're going to do something unique. And in this case for this player, blue two, which is here, is going to move one gem up just like that. And then player's going to go. And in this case, we already had yellow go and yellow moved onto this space. Now there's three specific things you can do in the game. You can move, fight, or rest. That's pretty much it up until the point where you fight the boss. Moving allows you to advance onto a space. 
and you always have to advance on the furthest space. If there's a character already in position, then you're going to advance to the next space after that character. And then you're going to place down monsters. You'll reveal demons. And in this case, it'll tell you what type of demons. It'll tell you the set of the demons. And in this case, it's five sets of these weak dudes. So one, two, three, four, but we're missing one. And that's because after you reveal five sets, you're then going to choose to take a set. In this case, he magically took a set of demons and put it on his board, which would be up here. After you take your demons, you'll check to see if you're on the treasure chest. So that's one move. That's one move action. That's one of your choices you can make. You can make one of the three. The other option is, of course, you can fight, where you'll basically be rolling your die, utilizing your abilities and skills, along with sometimes unique little aspects to your character and these passives. And you'll roll, and you're going to try and acquire the number on the bad guys based on the die that you roll. So if you wanted these guys here, you'd roll them. Oh, wow, three and a one. That would mean I'd defeat these guys if they were on my board, and if they were the chosen monsters I selected. Defeating monsters will let you turn them over, and they're going to have unique specific items that you can put over here. And you can then equip them to your character provided you're able to, and being able to will require you to have certain gems available to you in your little inventory space over here. And of course, it'll let you gain levels and items when you defeat monsters. So in this case, when you defeated these two guys here, a red and a blue, you can move a red and a blue gem up from one space to another, and you can choose in any order. And there's obviously better choices than others because when you remove certain pieces off, once there's nothing on that specific area, you're gonna gain that unique benefit. But if you start from the top to the bottom, you're going to make it, it's kind of going to cost a lot less for each, every single ability as opposed to going from the bottom. But going from the bottom will give you more benefit. The last thing you can do is rest. Rest is pretty simple. You can restore all of your stamina and your magic. You can equip or unequip items in any way you choose along the board here, provided you're able to. And then you can buy potions and check to see if you have made any achievements. You'll do that for both fighting and for resting. The achievements over here will be based on how you've moved up on your levels, or whether you've fought in certain monsters, or gained certain abilities, or certain equipment. In which case, you'll take these guys here, and they'll give you unique abilities at the end of the game. Once you trigger this little chest over here, all the rest of the monsters are going to flip over, they're going to turn into items, and you're going to draft them around the table. And when you draft them around the table, players are going to get to choose one of them and discard the rest after everybody's got one, and you move on to the next board. And there's multiple boards in the game, with fronts and backs. And eventually, you're going to come across the boss. And the boss has a unique little strategy as to how you're going to have to beat him. There's going to actually be cards that are going to pop up that you're going to have to go ahead and deal with or suffer the, suffer the consequences of. So you're going to have cards like these guys here and, of course, these ones here. And you'll have to actually go through a line of cards individually. So you'll be playing the game individually against the boss and basically attempt to survive farther than your opponents, gathering more points than them. And then it'll come down to a tie if, if everybody survived based on your life and etc., etc. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Moving, fighting, and resting, equipping, as well as pulling these gems off to utilize them to equip yourself and gain abilities, and using those abilities to fight scarier and stronger monsters as the board progresses. Because as you can see, the monsters are going to get more tough as you go throughout these boards here. And of course, in a longer player game, you'll be utilizing more boards, but the game plays the same regardless of the number of players, and that is Sanctum. Okay, let's come up and talk about it. Sanctum is a semi-cooperative game, and by that I mean it's a competitive game, but you are working together to fight against the evil demon lord. You want to slay him along with your allies in the game, but you want to have as much gold or glory as possible. So you want to achieve all the achievements, you want to get there ahead of everybody else, and you want to equip yourself with the best items possible. If you walk in there looking like a bad you-know-what, as opposed to your opponent who's basically wearing a little fig leaf, you're doing the right thing in this game. Now, of course, when it comes to the last battle as well, it's all about survivability and having the best specific equipment and the most stamina and mana to utilize those equipment as you possibly can. And that's really, really important. And speaking of that, basically the game is in one way competitive because you're trying to get the uh, the gear and you're trying to get the equipment and the items and you're trying to get the achievements before everybody else but you're not outright hindering your opponents the most you can do to really hinder your opponents is obviously take something they want or go too far too fast in the game 
pushing everybody else back. And when the boss pops out or having to deal with the beginning stages of the boss, he will hurt other players for taking too long to get to him. And if you have less health at the end of the game, you're very likely to lose. So you have to kind of stay on pace with everybody else, which can be hard when people are taking all the items that you want. Fighting demons is the most important thing in the game, and when you fight them, you're going to gain better and better items. So it'll even tell you what type of items on the demon that you're likely to get. So in this case, this demon will give you a helm, a knight's helm, which you can spend one stamina each time you do so. You'll gain one defense whenever the demon attacks you. If you don't defeat it, you're going to be utilizing your stamina to defend yourself. Or you can use like your mana to increase or decrease a die roll by plus one or plus two or plus three, depending on the level of the item or enchantment or whatever, as well as sometimes they might have even a defense on it attached. And then of course, demon skin armor. This will give you five defense, but it'll require two stamina and, or you can use a purple, which is either, and that will give you two. So you can have a total of seven for only three. And you're going to need to use potions, stamina and mana potions throughout the game to kind of bring back your valuable resources. And if you do not have those, it can be a hindrance as well. So paying for them during the certain times which you can do so is important. Changing out, switching out your equipment is also important in the game and progressing as fast as you possibly can. This game is a little bit uh, a resource management game, even though the resources are very limited to stamina and mana and your equipment and how you gain them. And by removing those gems as you fight the demons, you're going to be removing those gems and pushing them all the way up. And every time you remove all the gems on a specific card or tile, you'll gain that ability or that unique bonus mana or stamina that's like a passive that gives it to you forever. So if you only have three, you can get an extra one, which is super useful throughout the entire game. But you might not be able to get everything as the game progresses based on how long it takes and who gets what will push the game to the point where you're not going to get everything you want. So you have to kind of choose what you want to get. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's actually pretty challenging and pretty unique. It's something I haven't seen a lot before. I've seen games that feel like RPGs or games that feel like you're like uh, equipment you know, gathering equipment to fight a monster. But this one's got this kind of unique categorization, categorization of placing things and switching things and swapping things. And also it has that like King of Tokyo or Scrabble style, rolling the dice and trying to manipulate the die in order to succeed. And you can do that by simply re-rolling die or flipping over your, your, your die or rotating them plus one or plus two. And managing your, your resources is very important. The artwork for the game is excellent. It reminds me of Diablo. This whole game reminds me of playing Diablo as for going throughout the different maps and they just, they change and the demons change change as to how you have to fight them, how strong they get, and how they give you better equipment, and you can equip yourself, and if you want to rest, you can do the, all this kind of resting stuff. It just feels like Diablo to me, which I really like. Diablo is one of my favorite personal games, or my, per my, my personal favorite games on the PC. Really enjoyed that, and this one re really, really reminds me of that. And I like how we are working against each other, but we're not hindering each other necessarily. We all have the same goal, and we're all trying to successfully defeat the bad guy together, which is a nice feeling, specifically because Diablo kind of functions like that. You all want to fight Diablo and beat him, but you want that equipment for yourself. You want the glory for yourself. You want to do as much damage as possible because it makes you look good. Overall, Sanctum is a lot of fun. Uh, if I were to say any negatives, I guess it can be fairly lengthy in a four-player game. It can take quite a bit of time going from one tile to the next tile to the next tile. So it can feel potentially monotonous for some players. I noticed that some people experience that in my group when we're playing four players. It's definitely a lot shorter in a two and three player game. So if you don't want a lengthier game of this type of game, suggest so playing it at a lower player count. Personally for me, it didn't it didn't bother me at all because you progress consistently as you go throughout the game and of course at the cost of time and having to collect certain monsters and resources and whatnot and it also depends on how much players think and whether or not you can be smart about letting somebody else take their turn if you're resting and or you know rearranging equipment all that kind of stuff we learned to do that like we just rearranged equipment and whatnot while somebody else was going. So we didn't have to wait for somebody to do all these little monotonous things. We let the monotonous things take place and we just continue to play the game as long as it doesn't affect us. I think that's a really good way in which you can play this game, specifically when you're getting down to the end and there's a ton of stuff to do because you're going to be constantly switching out your equipment. 
The uh, stylization and the theme work very well. I feel like I'm moving along and fighting the bad guys, and I really, really enjoyed myself. This one was a toss-up in the group. Some people liked it, some people thought it was too long, but they still enjoyed it. And one person was like, eh, it's not really for me, just based on the, the style of the game and the thinking required. This is a medium game. Maybe, yeah, it's, that's probably like right in the medium area because of all the different fidgeting with the equipment that you want to try and make the character the best you possibly can. But regardless, for me, personally, I really enjoyed it. And if this sounds like something you would be interested in, link, link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. If you haven't done so already, do it. You got this far in the video. Finish that last little step. It helps me greatly. Check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists. Having a new giveaway up tomorrow. We're going to be giving away the game Rising Sun. So if you like that game, you can have a chance to win it on the website by participating in that survey and all the little things we do and checking out our blog posts. And you can also check out our live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We give away games. We play games just like this one on the stream. And you can even join in on us and play the games with us in certain games. So that's a lot of fun. Fun. join the community join our discord and all other kinds of stuff if you're interested regardless though i appreciate you watching this video nonetheless i want to know what you think down below in the comments is this a game for you not a game for you why or why not personally i think this art style is really really great i love the diablo theme and if you played it i want to know if you felt like this was also a diablo style game because i think it's the closest thing i've come come to like a diablo style game so far that isn't a dungeon crawler all right guys thank you so much for watching and as always i look forward to delving in to the sanctum with you and defeating the evil arch lord demon whatever his name is next time <laughs>